If you want to find out how your child can start their own business, click the link in the description below or watch a short video that will play after this one. Hi, fourth graders. Today we're going to be reading a story called My Librarian is a Camel, How Books Are Brought to Children Around the World by Margaret Ruhrs. The genre or type of story is informational text. Informational text gives facts and examples about a topic. As you read, look for headings that begin sections of related information, photographs and captions, and graphics to help explain the topic, such as maps, photographs, and captions. Before we get started, let's meet the author, Margaret Ruhrs. Margaret Ruhrs travels the world sharing her love of books with children. She has taught reading and writing in countries as far away as Pakistan, Indonesia, and Malaysia. She has written more than 20 books and has even opened a book-themed bed and breakfast. As we read, let's think about our essential question. How are books and libraries important to people and communities? Let's begin. Not every community has a library. Read on to learn more about some of the unique ways librarians deliver books to communities in distant areas. We can tell from our first heading that the first country we're going to learn about is Canada. Nunavut, which means our land in the language of the Inuit people, is a huge territory in Canada's north. The Arctic region stretches from the North Pole to Arviat in the south and from Kuglatuk in the west to Panjaniratung in the east. The distances are huge and many villages are very isolated. The Northwest Territories reach from Nunavut in the east to the Yukon in the west. Larger towns like Iqaluit, Tuktoyatuk, and Yellowknife have their own public library buildings, but many communities are just too small. Some communities, like Fort Layar, have a virtual library, which offers internet access. But even if the community does not have any kind of library building, the Northwest Territories public library system offers books to everyone in the far north through their Borrower by Mail program. Tyson Anikovic, Colin Igutok, James Nakek, and Cameron Ovalock are friends in Cambridge Bay, Nunavut. They request library books by email or by phone. A mobile library doesn't bring the books to their village. The books are sent through the mail. The Borrower by Mail program will send children any books they'd like to read. If the library doesn't have a book in its system, librarians will borrow the book from another library in Canada and mail it. They even include a stamped addressed envelope so the children won't have to pay to return the book. The boys take their young friend Liza for a ride on their sled as they walk to the post office to pick up their books. The boys look forward to reading that night. On winter days, the sun does not come above the horizon, and when the thermometer reads minus 50 degrees, the children like to curl up with a good book by the wood stove. While the northern wind howls across the tundra, they read fantasy and action novels. Liza is excited about finding good picture books in the package. They can keep their books for up to six weeks. After that, they'll pack them up and walk to the local post office to mail the books back to the library. Then they'll check the mail every day until another big brown package arrives with new books to devour in their remote corner of Canada's Arctic. Let's look at the sidebar on the bottom right-hand side of page 81. Here we can see a map of where Canada is located. Notice it's right above the United States. And we can see the Canadian flag. Canada. Capital, Ottawa. Estimated population, 30,532,900. Canada, located in North America, is the second largest country in the world. The most easterly point of Newfoundland 
is closer to England than it is to Calgary, Alberta. From east to west, Canada is so wide that there are six time zones within its borders. Canada has two official languages, English and French, and native Canadians also speak their own languages. The original people of the north are called Inuit, and they speak Inuktitut. Next, we're going to be learning about Finland. In the middle of Aboland Archipelago is a big water called Golkrona, meaning Golden Crown. It was given its name by Queen Blanca of Namur, 1316-1363. According to an old legend, while on a voyage to Finland, Queen Blanca promised her golden crown to the most beautiful thing she would see along the way. This turned out to be the bay in the south of Finland, and so she let her crown sink into the waves. The bay is now called Golkrona Bay. The south coast of Finland skirts the Gulf of Finland. The archipelago in the southwest consists of thousands of rocky islands. Some islands have only summer visitors, but others are populated year-round. People in this area of Finland speak both Finnish and Swedish. Since 1976, the Pargas Library has been bringing books to the people of these islands by book boat. Bookbot in Swedish or Kurjastavin in Finnish. The boat, called Kalkholm, meaning limestone island in Swedish, measures 4 meters wide and 12 meters long. It carries about 600 books. The boat, with a crew consisting of a librarian and an assistant, sails among the islands, making about 10 stops. Kids come scrambling down the rocky shores to collect their books. Since winters are severe in Finland, the boat goes out only from May to October. Maj Len, the chief librarian in Pargastad, oversees the operation of the book boat. Reading has become very important to our book boat children, she says. If the book boat didn't come, they might not be reading at all. They are always happy to see us and their supply of new books. Let's check out our sidebar here at the bottom of page 83. We can see where Finland is located on the map and we can see Finland's flag. Republic of Finland. Capital, Helsinki. Estimated population, 5,156,000. Finland lies in North Europe. At least a third of the country is north of the Arctic Circle. The country has two official languages, Finnish and Swedish. Other languages include Lapish and Romani. Lapland is a region that stretches across Norway, Sweden, Finland, and part of Russia. Most of Lapland is within the Arctic Circle, and parts of it are under snow and ice year-round. In northern Lapland, four towns share a mobile library bus, which also carries children's books. What makes this bus special is that the service is shared by communities in three countries, Finland, Sweden, and Norway. Next, let's learn about Kenya. The roads to Bula Iftin, 200 miles northeast of Nairobi, are impassable because of the desert sand, even for cars with four-wheel drive. But young people who live in nomadic villages in the area are hungry for books. So librarians use the most economical means of transportation, camels. And at the top of the page, we have some photographs. The top photograph has a caption off to the right-hand side. It says, These young readers are grateful for the books brought by Camel. And then our bottom photograph also has a caption. These camels are ready to bring books to children in remote villages. Library camels are on the road five days a week. They can carry heavy loads and need little water in the heat of the desert. One camel may carry as many as 500 books, weighing about 400 pounds. A driver and a librarian divide the books into two boxes. They saddle them on the camel's back, which is covered with a grass mat for protection. 
A second camel carries a tent that serves as the library roof. The students of Bola Iftin eagerly await the arrival of the camels. When the library caravan finally reaches the village, the children watch as the librarian pitches the tent and displays the books on wooden shelves. The librarian places the grass mats on the ground in the shade of an acacia tree, making a place where the children can sit. The students can treasure their new books for two weeks. When the library camels return, the children can trade their books for new ones. Our sidebar at the bottom of page 85 once again shows us where Kenya is located and the flag of Kenya. Republic of Kenya Capital, Nairobi Estimated population, 32 million Kenya is a country in East Africa. Kenya's climate varies. The coast, which lies on the Indian Ocean, is hot and humid. Inland, the climate is temperate, but the northern part of the country is dry. The official language is English. The national language is Kiswahili. Next, let's learn about Mongolia. For centuries, people in Mongolia have led a nomadic lifestyle, moving across the steppe, a vast grass-covered plain, with their herds. Many people are still herders of livestock, moving with their herds as they graze. The life of the nomads has not changed very much since the old days, except that nowadays the herders like to use iron horses, meaning motorbikes, instead of real horses. Very few people have telephones, television, or access to computers, but most people can read. There is almost no illiteracy in this country. Jambin Dashtendog is a well-known writer of children's books in Mongolia. He was looking for a way to bring books to the many children of herders' families who live scattered across the Gobi Desert. A horse-drawn wagon, as well as a camel, is used to carry books into the desert. Together with the Mongolian Children's Cultural Foundation, Mr. Dashtendog was able to obtain a minibus and 10,000 books mostly donated by Japan. The Japanese books are being translated into Mongolian, and Mr. Dashtendog makes trips with the minibus to bring the books to children in the countryside. The book tour is called Amtai Nam, which means candy books. Why? Because before they share the books, the children are given food, including some sweets. After the children listen to stories and choose books, Mr. Dog asks, Which was sweeter, books or candies? And the children always answer, Books! I just returned from a trip to visit herders' children in the Great Gobi Desert, said Mr. Dog, who has visited nearly 10,000 children in the past two years. We covered some 1,500 kilometers in two weeks. And this was in winter, so it was cold and snowy. We had no winter fuel for our bus, so we had to use summer fuel, and the fuel froze at night, making the bus stall. But we weren't cold. The stories and their heroes kept us warm. We have another sidebar down at the bottom of page 87 that shows us where Mongolia is located and the Mongolian flag. The capital of Mongolia is Ulaanbaatar. Estimated population is 2,300,000. Mongolia is a vast country in Northeast Asia, more than one and a half million square kilometers in size. With fewer than two and a half million people living in it, there is lots of empty space throughout the land. The official language is Khalkha Mongol. To preserve traditional culture and traditions, children are being taught the old Cyrillic Mongolian script which is written vertically from top to bottom. The country has high mountain ranges as well as vast desert plains with the Gobi Desert in the southeast. Snow leopards, wild horses, and ibex still roam the Gobi Desert. Most of the roads that run through Mongolia are unpaved and rough. The climate is one of extremes, cold in winter, hot and very dry in summer. Next, let's read about Peru. Children in Peru can receive their books in several different, innovative ways. 
Fadili Ibi Peru is an institution that delivers books in bags to families in Lima. Each bag contains 20 books, which families can keep for a month. The books come in four different reading levels so that children really learn how to read. The project in Spanish is called El Libro Compartido en Familia and enables parents to share the joy of books with their children. We have some photographs at the top of the page with a caption. Some Peruvian readers receive their books by donkey cart. In small rural communities, books are delivered in wooden suitcases and plastic bags. These suitcases and bags contain books that the community can keep and share for the next three months. The number of books in each suitcase depends on the size of the community. There are no library buildings in these small towns, and people gather outside in the plaza to see the books they can check out. In the coastal regions, books are sometimes delivered by donkey cart. The books are stored in the reading promoter's home. In the ancient city of Cajamarca, reading promoters from various rural areas select and receive a large collection of books for their area. The program is called Aspaderic. The reading promoter lends these books to his or her neighbors, and after three months, a new selection of books goes out to each area. Books in this system are for children and adults. And last but not least, Fe y Alegría brings a collection of children's books to rural schools. The books are brought from school to school by wagon. The children, who are excited about browsing through the books when they arrive, are turning into avid readers. Let's check out our sidebar at the bottom of page 89. We can see where Peru is located and the flag of Peru. Republic of Peru. Capital, Lima. Estimated population, 28 million. Peru in South America borders the South Pacific Ocean between Ecuador and Chile. The tropical coast, the Andes Mountains, and the Amazon River make Peru a diverse and interesting country. The Peruvian people speak Spanish. Quechua is the country's other official language. Peru's history includes the Inca civilization, which occupied much of the South American continent 500 years ago. And finally, let's learn about Thailand. In Omakoy, a region of northern Thailand, there are no schools or libraries. Tribal people cannot read or write. The government of Thailand hopes to change that with a literacy program that includes bringing books to remote villages in the jungle. A number of these villages can be reached only on foot. This makes transportation difficult, especially during the rainy season. How do you get books to people who need them most when they live in hard-to-reach mountainous regions of northern Thailand? Elephants! The Chiang Mai Non-Formal Education Center had the idea to use elephants as libraries. Elephants are already being used here to plow the paddy fields and to carry logs and crops. Now, more than 20 elephants in the Amkhoi region are used to carry books. The elephant teams spend two to three days in each village. Each trip covers seven or eight villages, so it takes each elephant team 18 to 20 days to complete a round trip. Let's read our caption for the photograph at the top of the page. The Elephant Library is headed for remote villages in northern Thailand. The Books by Elephant delivery program serves 37 villages, providing education for almost 2,000 people in the Amkhoi region. They have even designed special metal slates that won't break when carried on the elephant's backs across the rough terrain. These slates are used to teach Thai children to write and read. There are also two-person teams carrying books to about 16 villages, bringing learning materials to another 600 people. In Bangkok, the capital of Thailand, old train carriages have been transformed into a library. The train is called Hong Raftai Yawachang, which means library train for young people. The train serves the homeless children of Bangkok, the Railway Police Division in Bangkok realized there was a need for a safe place for street children, so they refurbished the old train carriages at the railway station, where many of the kids were hanging out. 
the police restored the trains to their old glory, complete with wood paneling and shining copper light fixtures. They turned the railway cars into a library and a classroom. Here, the children learned to read and write. The police have even transformed the area around the train into a garden where they grow herbs and vegetables. We have one more sidebar at the bottom of page 91, showing us where Thailand is located and Thailand's flag. Kingdom of Thailand, capital, Bangkok. Estimated population, 62,860,000. Thailand, pronounced Thailand, which means the land of the free, lies in Southeast Asia. The climate varies from season to season dry in January and February, hot in March and May, wet from June to October, and cool in November and December. The official language of the country is Thai. Wow, fourth graders, that was a fascinating story. I hope you enjoyed learning how books are shared with children all over the world. I know I did, and I sure learned a whole lot that I didn't know. Have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile and I'll see you soon. Bye. How cool would it be if your child could start their own business? With the Alpha program, now they can. The Alpha program empowers children by teaching them financial literacy, entrepreneurship, and important emotional skills to develop confidence and a positive mindset. If you'd like to find out more and help support my channel, click the link in the description. Have a great day and see you soon. Bye.